Hello, welcome to Accounting Hub. I am Professor George Carpin, PhD in Accounting. And today our topic is variable cost and contribution margin income statement. By the way, if you want to know more about contribution margin, we have a video about it in our channel and it is in our video description. Okay. So before we talk about variable costing, we need to talk about absorption costing. Absorption costing, all, all manufacturing related costs or product costs, fixed and variable, are absorbed into the cost of the product. So direct material, direct labor, and manufacturing overhead are treated as product costs. So here, absorption costs, we classify our costs in product costs and period costs required by GAAP and the IRS. So it is used by financial accounting. What is the difference between absorption costing and variable costing? Only variable manufacturing costs are treated as product costs. So here we don't care about the old classification about product and period costs. We classify here now into variable and fixed. And usually we call them variable expenses. Only used for internal management purpose often leads to better decisions. Show incremental cost of manufacturing each unit. Operating income will not be affected by changes in inventory level. So it is smoother, much more than absorption cost. And then the contribution margin income statement, some characteristics organized by cost behavior, variable and fixed. All, all variable costs are expensed above the contribution margin line, line, so that's why they are called variable expenses. All fixed costs are expensed below the contribution margin line, and then we add it with the uh, fixed operating expenses. Contribution margin, just a brief review. Sales revenue, less variable expenses. Operating income is the same in both statements. When all units are produced and sold in the same period, service and merchandising companies' operating income will always be the same regardless of formats because, of the, because they don't have fixed manufacturing overhead, only for internal use. Okay, but it's much easier if we have an Excel file. So let's go to our Excel file here. And by the way, all of our Excel files, they are available for download. This one, it is in our video description. So here we have our numbers. Variable cost per unit, direct materials, direct labor, manufacturing overhead, and variable operating expenses. If we combine these costs here, we will have 30. That is the same as our previous video about contribution margin. Variable expenses, 30 units sold, 2,000, selling price, 65. So units sold, oh, sorry, 2,000 units, selling price, 65. And let's consider for now units produced, 2,000 units. And our fixed numbers, fixed manufacturing overhead, $30,000. Fixed operating expenses, $15,000. Let's do our production cost per unit, absorption costs, direct materials, 15, direct labor, seven, variable manufacturing overhead, five, fixed manufacturing overhead, 30, divided by 2,000 units produced. So the total cost will be 42. Variable. We consider only the variable costs. And then five, variable operating expenses. We will not consider it because it is not a production cost. Okay, so sum, let's sum it 27. Let's work with the contribution margin statement per unit. And then we will see that it doesn't make a lot of sense. Say, sales price, sorry. Selling price per unit, 
and spending error here, setting price per unit. Setting price per unit, 65. Variable expenses, 27. That is our variable cost plus variable operating expenses, 30. Contribution margin, 65 less 30, 35. The same contribution margin here, 35. And fixed expenses, we don't work with fixed expenses per unit. So it will be the sum of fixed manufacturing overhead plus fixed operating expenses. Let's work now with the total. That makes sense. Contribution margin, income statement, sales revenue, selling price per unit times number of units. So 2,000 units. Variable expenses, variable expenses per unit times units sold. And then contribution margin, 70. The same 70 here, okay? Fixed expenses, fixed expenses here, 45. And operating income, 70 less 45, $25,000. Let's work now with the absorption cost. That is our green here. The income statement, sales revenue, selling price per unit times unit sold. The same 130, the same 130 here, because it's sales revenue, it doesn't matter what kind of costing we are working with. Cost of goods sold, total cost per unit times unit sold. And gross profit, sales revenue, less cost of goods sold, 46. Operating expenses, the variable operating expenses per unit times unit sold plus fixed operating expenses, 21. Operating income, gross profit, less. Uh, operating expenses, 25. The difference in income between contribution margin, uh, be between contribution margin income statement and the absorption cost in income statement, nothing. And here we can go back to our PowerPoint here. Operating income is the same in both statements when all units are produced and sold in the same period. Unit produced, 2,000. Unit sold, 2,000. Changing our inventory. Units produced, less units sold, times total cost per unit. Nothing, because we have no inventory. But you will see why we have this formula. Variable costing. Units produced, less units sold, times 27. The difference here, variable, less absorption, nothing. So our operating income is the same because we have no changes in inventory. Let's consider now. Our inventory will increase. We produced 2,000 units, we sold only 1,900. Now our operating income is not the same. The, the uh, contribution margin income statement or the variable costing provides a lower operating income. And where is this difference? In the inventory, because we have a greater inventory in, uh, working with variable costing. So here, our inventory is increasing. That's usually what happens when the company is growing. And in a good economic system, the company will always grow. So the inventory always uh, will grow, usually. And remember, Lower operating income provides us lower uh, uh, income tax, lower dividends. Financial accounting, they don't want, or financial accounting, they don't want lower dividends. IRS, they don't want lower income tax. So let's go back here on PowerPoint. That's why they required absorption costing. Okay, now let's do the opposite. Units produced, 2,000. Units sold, 2,200. Now we have the opposite. Greater operating income in the 
variable costing or contribution margin income statement, lower operating income in absorption costing or traditional income statement. Where is this difference? It is in the inventory. Okay, guys, so thank you so, oh, thank you so much. If you have questions or comments, leave it here or email me at jscarping at gmail.com. Subscribe our channel, like our video, and have a very nice day.